Well, I've brought these up before, you know, I have along the fence line, well, all over up here, but along my fence line in particular, I have a lot of wild grapes growing. And I kind of like it because they make a, well, a good, almost like a hedge. You know, as long as the guys don't have to go in there and fix the fence, they're not a problem. But I do have a problem in places where, like there and there, there are little ash trees and vines start going up them. And that's no good because they will actually pull a tree down, you know, they'll break off branches and whatnot. And I'm hoping these little ash will keep growing, you know, because a lot of the older ash died out. So I'm pulling the vines out of the tree, taking off the grapes, and then stringing the, gra the vine out along the fence. Uh, it's better to have them on a fence where I can get at them than way up in the tree too because you would need a fire engine to get up there. But they are good grapes. They're not big. You know, they're just wild. But like all wild things, raspberries, strawberries, any of that stuff, they may be small in size, but they're extremely powerful. You know, they're, they're really, really grapey. <laughs> so, I've always thought about doing something with them. And uh, this year I got the time, so I'm gonna do some experiment with them. But, you know, like, for just eating grapes, like I said, they're very powerful, and they don't sweeten up until after the first frost. Well, by that time, the birds have, have just decimated them. So, they're pretty good now. There's a few green ones in there once in a while. So like, here you'll see a, a couple of ones that aren't ripe yet. But, I'll, I'll deal with that. Rather than, because the birds are just stripped off. I happen to think of it as I walk by here and then uh, I scared a bunch of birds out of there. So I know what's going on. So I'm going to clip all these off. And then I'll stretch this out that way on the fence line. Because I'm, I'm real good from here all the way to the garden is a solid wall. But I would like to get more of them going that way. So I'll encourage them to go that way. But I really do want to keep them out of the trees because, like I said, while I'm here, it's nice ash trees and they will pull them down. And they don't do them any good at all. So it's right easier I can keep them confined to the fence. Because they, uh, I have seen uh, down below there was a spot where I had some pretty good plum trees. Well, them grapevines got in there and, and just wrecked the plum trees completely. So they're good in their place. Like I said, I'd really like to spare these ash trees. And I'm going to have to make sure and keep them out of my apple trees because they're, they're right there too. So I got like 8 feet, 10 feet maybe from the fence. So I just have to keep an eye on them so they don't jump over. Because they get to be just a solid wall. But they're a good little grip. It's funny because... You know, people, something like this, they don't, they don't so much want to use them for themselves as they want to think of a way to make money on them. I know there's a, <laughs> just down the road not far, there's somebody who decided, whoop, they'll open a winery, you know, at some yuppie kind of, his parents have more money than you know what to do with. So this kid, he got the kind of a California attitude wants to own a vineyard. So it planted a whole bunch of grapes and then they're going to, well, pay people to pick grapes because they sure aren't going to pick these. But, you know, they, there's always somebody trying something like that. Uh, Any way they can make a buck on something. But I'm just looking to make use of them. Like I said, they're a powerful little grape. But you can make some really good jam on them. And if they stay on the fence, it's not bad. 
But when they start, you know, getting 30 feet up in the air, well, then it's a little tough dealing with them.